Smell flowers in VR, cheap body tracking, Google Palm 2 AI, Samsung shape-shifting patent, and much more. This is MOSFET Weekly. Starting off with virtual and augmented reality, a team of researchers from universities in Hong Kong and China have designed an interesting way to incorporate smell into virtual reality. Unlike existing solutions which usually contain various liquids which require regular refilling, this design uses paraffin wax infused with different scents and heats them up with a mini electric coil. The more heat applied, the stronger the scent. They've experimented with two versions of this, one as a simple band-aid type design which goes on the top lip and a more complex mask that emits up to nine scents, which when combined can create roughly 30 separate smells. Though it's pretty rough around the edges, it certainly is an interesting concept and I bet it could be reduced further in size. In other research news, a team with the Future Interfaces group at Carnegie Mellon have developed a way to fairly accurately track body movements in real time using only a smartphone, smartwatch and earbuds. Called IMU Poser, this system takes inertial measurement unit data from the devices, providing a way to cheaply guess what the body is doing. It can work with all three devices, phone, watch and earbuds, down to just one, using its algorithm to make a best guess on what's happening. This could prove a cheap and easily accessible way for users to track their bodies with technology that most people already have. In other news, Virtual Desktop is now available on the latest HTC headsets, meaning basically all VR systems and platforms can now run it. While it's not groundbreaking news, I think that the VR desktop concept of creating virtual rooms to play games, watch movies or work in is very interesting, and an area I am watching closely. I think once these platforms get to a level where real work, collaborations and shared experiences can take place, it will be a game changer. This week Google unveiled their new prototype for Project Starline. This newer design is a lot smaller than the previous version, taking advantage of recent advancements in AI and machine learning to create a live 3D human representation for teleconferencing. Similar to the Sony spatial reality display I showed a few months ago, the Starline prototype seems to also track the user's gaze and head position, so the person they are talking to has three-dimensional depth, creating the illusion that another person is sitting opposite. At a recent TED Talk, former Apple designer and co-founder of Humane, Imran Chowdhury gave an overview for the vision of the company's AI-powered device. He says that it has been designed from the ground up to work with artificial intelligence and works as a standalone device, not requiring a phone to pair with. It sits inside a shirt or jacket pocket, which is an interesting choice, and has a mini projector instead of a screen. The idea is that the user can seamlessly interact with the AI more naturally, asking it questions directly, to instantly translate speech for example, or showing it things through the camera, kind of like the device from the movie Her. It's a little thin on the details so it could end up being vaporware, but it could be worth keeping an eye on just in case. In other news, Becky Stern put out an interesting teardown video the other day, taking apart a pair of Ray-Ban Story smart glasses to see what electronics are inside. She enlisted the help of electrical engineer David Cranor to try and figure out what all the main components are, explaining what everything does. Check it out if you're curious about the little tricks and tips engineers use to make these kind of electronics as small and light as possible. Becky also put up a detailed page on her blog for those interested. Here's another sign that various electronics companies are exploring rollable display technology. The eagle-eyed Cool Patents account on Twitter recently noticed a newly published patent by Samsung showing a concept for a shape-shifting smartphone complete with rollable display that changes size depending on how you're using it. In one of the accompanying drawings it shows how the phone can change between four different states from a super thin band style to normal phone size to phablet and finally to the largest tablet size. Blaz Semprimoznik has designed and built an analogue film camera which takes standard 35mm film. It can shoot movies, photos and time lapses and also can scan developed films. He really went all out with the features, also including fully automatic film winding, with auto lens track positioning, built-in light meter, OLED display interface and compatibility with C-mount lenses. The resulting videos that come out of the device have a definite nostalgic vibe to them, and Blaz has created a page on his website explaining in more depth. At last week's Rapid Plus TCT additive manufacturing event, 
AO13D showed off their thermal optimization system, which simulates 3D prints, allowing users to easily fine tune heat flow behaviors inside specific sections of print layers so output quality is optimized. Though this software is tailored specifically to AO13D's polymer bead printers, it would be great to see this kind of system work its way to hobbyists and open source. More 3D printed shoe news this week. This time, a live form have created the Armis collection. In my opinion, these are slightly more normal looking than the Zellerfeld shoes, but still don't think I'd ever wear anything this funky. What about you? The product design arm of the famous car company Porsche have also teamed with shoemaker Puma to design the 3D Matrix sneakers, which feature a 3D printed midsole. Using AM technology allowed them to create a super complex geometry out of what looks like some sort of TPU rubber, and they say its design means every time the foot hits the ground, it's transformed into horizontal movement, so up to 83% of energy expended can be reused, increasing running performance. That could just be marketing hype, but it is interesting to see how these grid structure designs reduce weight without apparently reducing comfort or performance. I'm curious to see if this manufacturing method will make it past the gimmick stage at some point. Another continuing trend is buildings constructed using 3D printing techniques. From April to July this year, German real estate group Krauss will be creating what they say is the largest 3D printed building in Europe, measuring in at 54 by 11 meters. The concrete used in the printer, provided by Heidelberg Materials, is apparently 100% recyclable and can be broken down into its constituent parts of sand, gravel and cement stone. Though it is interesting to see larger buildings being constructed using the technology, I look forward to further developments on the aesthetic side of things, as most of these types of buildings all look the same. One project which took a different approach to constructing buildings is this Japanese tea house outbuilding created by architects Kei Atsumi and Nicholas Preaud, mixing 3D printing and traditional Japanese joinery methods. The Tsuginote Tea House is a curved structure made from 900 plus unique wood based PLA tiles and held together only with wooden joints. Designed as a study into what's possible with widely available FDM printer technology, I really like that designers and architects are thinking differently about novel construction methods, and it's pretty cool they could make this on a standard size printer. This week, Sanctuary AI uploaded yet another video of their general purpose robots completing a range of tasks, this time showing off 60 tasks in 60 seconds, from bagging groceries to sorting mail, dusting, making coffee, soldering, and a lot more. I wish more robotics companies were as on the ball with videos showing off their capabilities. In other news, North America's largest private home builder, Matami Homes, has teamed up with robo-taxi maker Beep to provide a fully autonomous shuttle service for the residents in one of their housing developments. This will allow the residents of the Tolaro, Florida complex to make regular trips to surrounding shops and restaurants. Matami is planning on building a further 1,000 plus new homes on the development this year. There's something about this kind of beautiful gated community with its own high-tech services that feels like a classic sci-fi trope, don't you think? Moving over to artificial intelligence, and I recently found this site, which some of you may find useful. If you want to see all the different artificial intelligence research that's being carried out around the world, AI R&D collates research papers and makes them easily searchable. The link is in the description. And ending this week, Google has announced their next generation large language model, dubbed Palm 2. According to Google, this LLM has advanced reasoning capabilities and has multilingual proficiency. In their overview video, the company showed Palm 2 easily translating sections of code from one programming language to another. They say that the use of compute optimal scaling, that is scaling the model size and the training data size in proportion to each other, has led to Palm 2 actually being smaller than the previous version, while still having better performance. No date yet on exactly when it will be available to the public, but Google hinted that it is already working in the background on many of their apps and services. Alright, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe to this channel or check out mosfet.net.